Good morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. We had an overwhelming um, vote with the poll about can Satan read your minds? So let me get to that and then I will discuss with you what I want to discuss. Ooh, because the Lord has been speaking to me, brothers and sisters, and um, I just can't believe, believe it. Anyway, the weapon we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God, and we take captive every thought and make it obedient to Christ. 2 Corinthians 10, 4, 5. Satan cannot read our minds. Only God and his son Jesus Christ can. Satan can influence our minds and our thoughts. Thus the Bible instructs us in quotes, put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. Ephesians 6 11. Without it, without it, you are guaranteed a casualty in the invisible war with it. You are invincible with it. Spiritual warfare is waged against invisible beings that per personify the extremities of evil, and their weapons are spiritual, not physical. While they cannot bite us, physically violate us sexually or cause us to levitate, they can tempt us to cheat, steal, lie, and other sins. Furthermore, it is crucial, the Lord had me underline crucial, to note that if we open the door to Satan by failing to put on the full armor of God, he does, as it were, sit on our shoulders and whisper into our ears. The whisper cannot be discerned with the physical ear. It can, however, penetrate the physical ear and the physical mind. We cannot explain how such communication takes place any more than we cannot explain how our immaterial minds can cause the physical synapsis of the brain to fire. But that such mind-to-mind -mind communications takes place in, it is indisputable. If it were not so, the devil could not have tempted Judas to betray his master, seduced Aeneas and Sapphira to deceive Peter, or incited David to take a census of Israel, 1 Corinthians 21. Spiritual warfare is the battle of the mind. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, the Lord has been talking to me heavily and having me write by hand and study. And I know, I know I'm not popular because of this. There's many on here, okay? The Lord is telling me this and I'm, I don't go around naming names and making videos of people and doing all of that. It's just not something that's going to cause... Uh, people to listen to me anymore. It actually makes the people that make these videos look foolish. Um, and I'm not here to divide brethren. I'm not here to play God. I'm not here to say Lisa knows it all. I am here to say that the Lord is speaking to me more and more every single day. And brothers and sisters, I keep, he keeps saying to me, this once saved, always saved is true, but after you are renewed by the Holy Spirit. It's why would it state everywhere in the Bible that we are in a spiritual warfare? 
okay? David could not have tempted Judas to betray his master, seduced um, Annius and Sapphira to deceive Peter, or incited David to take a census, 1 Chronicles 21 of Israel. Spiritual warfare is the battle of the mind. And in the end times, that is the worst battle we are in because it, sa it stated that Satan, if you do not put on your full armor of God, always, then Satan will sit on your shoulder and whisper in your ear, brothers and sisters. If that were not so, and we all of a sudden came and just were once saved, always saved, and just walk around and do whatever we want, why would the Lord keep commanding us to put on the full armor of God? Brothers and sisters, any of you out there that are still in the world and drinking, going to bars, hanging around with unequally yoked people, equally yoked people, excuse me, um, smoking medical marijuana, I was put on marijuana when I lived in Maine to gain weight. Brothers and sisters, it makes you, the Lord wants us to have a sober mind. Now, I cannot say that I know it helps people that are hurting, that are dying of cancer and things like this, uh, nausea, gaining weight, but the medical marijuana of today is making people become inhumane, uh, further from the Lord. It's, it is. I don't know. I know that years ago when people would grow their own marijuana, it was a very different high than it is today. And today people are on antidepressants, medication, and this medical marijuana, mixing it with those, you are not of sober mind. Okay. And the Lord tells us this for a reason, brothers and sisters, that we must be of sober mind because this, the evil one lurks around and prowls like a lion and wants to uh, devour us. And Jesus Christ and God the Father tell us to, to wear the full armor of God at all times. So if once saved, always saved meant that you just believe and then nothing else and you could walk around and do whatever you want to and if you keep tripping and, and, and you keep sinning, you, you're you already locked, sealed, and delivered is a falsehood. And the people that are teaching that are being deceived also. Um, I know good pastors that teach that. And, and like I said, it is true, but you have to first teach the first. You must be holy. Not one that is not holy will inherit the kingdom of God. And I'm sorry to say, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm getting emails. I'm getting people that are telling me, Lisa, you are wrong. I love you, but I disagree with you because once saved, always saved. When the Lord died on the cross, that's it. Yes, <laughs> it is it. But you must live a holy life. You can't go around sinning. You can't go in bars. You can't be around unequally yoked, unequally yoked people. You can't do the same things and you don't do the same things when you are born again. Jesus died for us on that cross. He felt every sin. And what happened when the veil was ripped? God the Father could not even look at him while every sin was going through his body. He had to turn away from his son because darkness and lightness does not mix, brothers and sisters. I'm sorry if I'm unpopular. I'm sorry if people are misunderstanding me. But I am saying once you are saved, yes, he never lets you go, but truly know what it is to be saved, not to just say, I believe, I believe the Lord died on the cross and now I could go around and I could be going bars and I could do this and I could do that and I could do this and once saved, always saved, once saved, always saved. That's not born again. You must not mock God. God will not be mocked mocked. And I know m there are many, especially 
a couple, and I will not name names, that want to be popular and want to get subscriptions and want to just be like, oh, 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 once saved, always saved. We fly soon, we fly soon, we fly soon, we fly soon. And they're not teaching the true gospel of God. God will not be mocked. Why do you think he says, why the gate? to hell and narrow the gate to heaven. Yes, he died on the cross for all of our sins. And people are at me and saying, you can't go by the Old Testament anymore. Jesus died now in the New Testament. Again, God will not be mocked. And that's why he tells us to wear the full armor of God on us. Brothers and sisters, don't be fooled. Don't follow false prophets that are tingling your ears just to be popular in this world. That's what they're doing. They are just being popular on YouTube and gaining subscriptions. I don't care. I care about what the father and his son say. I fear, I'm talking about you're gambling with eternity here. So, I say it again. Yes, once saved, always saved. However, the Lord keeps telling me that these people must teach that you can only gain the kingdom of heaven by being holy and being sinless. I'm telling you the truth. This is what the Father tells me. This is no joke. Brothers and sisters, we are in the end times. Think, think we are in the end times. That means Satan only has a certain amount of time and he is tricking he is tricking and he is sending out false prophets. They might not even know that they are working for Satan, but they are because they're not. They are not teaching the unpopular gospel. And that is, you must be sinless and ho and holy. And people go, well, God said himself, there's not one that's perfect. That is true. That is true. However, you have to try to be. You have to put not put yourself in those situations. You cannot put yourself in those situations. You have to stay tight and glued to the gospel of Jesus Christ so that Satan cannot trick you with his schemes. Brothers and sisters, we are in the end times and I'm you are you are playing with eternity. I suggest all of you not listen to Lisa but listen to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Listen to what Paul says, listen to what Peter says, listen to all of them. All the apostles say that darkness and lightness cannot mix. You cannot walk around and do the same things you did before you were saved or you were not saved. When, you're, when you are saved, you die and the Holy Spirit takes over your body and you are transformed. That means you walk a holy walk. All right? If I'm not popular, I'm not popular. If I lose people, I'm sorry. I'm not here to gain your love. I'm here to gain the Father's love and 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 the fa Father God and his son Jesus Christ. And to save souls because wide the gate to hell and narrow the gate to heaven. Especially in these times, brothers and sisters, we are in the end times and Satan is the master of schemes and he is tricking people and using YouTube to trick people. He is, he is on certain people's shoulders and whispering in their ears and they are teaching you a false gospel. I'm sorry, but it's true. Read the word yourself. And, and if you want to be tickled and stroked, well then, you're gambling with your eternity because Jesus Christ did die for our, our sins, but God will not be mocked. You must live a holy life. You must die and be transformed, period. I love you all. I love you all. And that's all that I could say. Please hit like, hit subscribe, or move on. Uh, that's the easiest thing for me to say. And that's what God and his son, Jesus Christ, is telling me. I'm with him all day long. And I don't come on here. Uh, I would never, I would never, I would never jeopardize my own salvation to come on here and lie about God the Father and his son, Jesus Christ. You could Google on and go on YouTube and there's many saying they've had dreams, they've had this, they've had that, they've had this, they've had that, and oh, uh, we fly soon, oh, once saved, always saved. Yes, but they are deceiving you. They're leaving a big block out of that gospel and they will be 
persecuted and be standing there when God the Father comes down and they are still here in the rapture to, 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 to be in the seven-year tribulation. They will stand around like this, the Lord told me, with their hands like this going, what, what, what happened, what happened? I thought once saved, always saved. <laughs> God will not be mocked, my brothers and sisters, and he's keeping me up night after night, night after night to teach me this and to come on here and say this. And that's all I have to say, and I will continue to do it with the Lord, God Almighty, behind me. I love you all. God bless you.